ちら様ですか丘は守ると申す。資産をすべて奪いに来た親の敵を打つのが先だ死ねえ Welcome to Learn Japanese Pod with me, Alex, and the amazing Ami. Welcome to the Fun Friday edition of Learn Japanese Pod. If you don't know what Fun Friday is, Where have you been? Have you been living in a cave? It's where we temporarily put away our Japanese textbooks and talk about everything and anything to do with Japan, the culture, its people, and any other random facts that happen to float into our heads. Ami, how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. I had a day, I had my day off today. So nice. I tried to be, you know, Super, super productive because I did the exact opposite last time. Right. So, yeah, I had a pretty productive day. Great. What, what did you get done? I got done、uh, recording a song for somebody. Fantastic. And,、uh, you know, went to the store and bought everything I needed for the house and cleaned the car and. And whatnot. So that's fantastic. Well done. And while you were doing this, was there this kind of Disney music track in the background? Actually, yeah, kind of, except in like, you know, fast forward version. <laughs> How about you? How are you? What you been up to? I am a highly motivated individual. I am motivated 110% all of the time. And currently, right now, I'm 110% motivated to eat this donut in front of me. <laughs> is it、uh, by chance, is it Mr. Donut? It isn't. Oh. It was, it was a rubbish com- combini one, actually. Oh, but they're still pretty good. By the way, I am drinking my 7 Eleven coffee, <laughs> which is actually the best convenience store coffee in Japan. And I don't get paid any money to say this. I know, I was going to say you're probably trying to get some free coffee, but. Right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But no, we are not、um, sponsored by 7 Eleven. We can pay you in coffee. <laughs> <laughs> It's. Cold in Japan, but the skies are blue. It's absolutely beautiful. And、uh, it's really, really nice weather out today. It was raining like all day today over here. Oh dear. You're, you're having、yeah. a bit of English you're having a bit of English weather, right? Yeah. Sate. Sate. Ami sensei. Hi. Kyo wa nani ni tsuite o hanashi shimashou ka? Kyo wa telebi bangumi. 日本のテレビについて話したいなと思います、うん、かなり大きい話題ですねそうですねいろいろ,いろいろ番組がありますよね,すねたくさんありますたくさんあります So today, Ami and myself are talking about Japanese TV and what we'll do is first of all, we'll go over that little、uh, that little samurai drama Ami and I acted out. <laughs> that we pretty much made up on the fly.、Uh, just before we started recording, I said, Hey, Ami, sorry to ask you this, but could you just write a really short script for a short <laughs> samurai drama? And Ami's like, What is wrong with you, Alex? Seriously. Hey, it's nothing new. 
<laughs> it's nothing new. Yeah, no, you're, you're used to my craziness. And then uh, after that, we'll talk about some of our favorite TV programs. I think this isn't a very thorough survey of every single Japanese program out there. I'm sure there are some uh, Japanese TV otaku who could probably teach me a thing or two. But what I'm going to talk about is some of the big classic shows that all Japanese people know. And then, Amy, you can talk about some of the TV programs you like. Sure. And uh, I'll probably be showing my age uh, talking about some of these two. I'm sure there's a couple of shows that I'm going to talk about that uh, young Japanese people have never watched. But, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before we talk about TV, let's go over that samurai drama. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, basically, um, th what we wanted to do was this was to pay an homage to all those really cool TV samurai dramas on TV. And so basically in our little story, what happens is I'm playing the bad guy and Ami is the plucky geisha, <laughs> the, the, the good girl who lives at home, who tries to live her life in a good way. But I've come to basically take all her money. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I knock on the door and then what, what did you say? I said, hi. So I said, yes. Hi. Who is it? So this is like a super polite way to ask, you know, who it is. When you're, on the, when you're speaking on the telephone, you, you, can you also say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I said, Ogawa mamoru to mosu. So, Ogawa mamoru. Ogawa is the family name. Remember in Japanese, you say your family name first. My name is Alex Brook. Brook means small river. So change that into the kanji, small river, you get Ogawa, which is a Japanese name. And Mamoru comes from the fact that I'm called Alexander, which apparently in ancient Greek means defender of men. So I decided to change it to <laughs> defender. And Mamoru, which means to defend, is also a man's name in Japanese. So Ogawa Mamoru to so if any of you have done the learn japanese five day self-introduction challenge you learned that you say your name and then to moshimas so it's a very polite way to say alex to moshimas i my name is alex but back in the days of old they used to say mm -hmm. to mosu right yes ami our plucky geisha realizes this is the murderer of her no. parents no. And then what, what, what did you say? I said, Kisama, nan no yoda. So, Kisama, so Kisama is a very traditional way of saying you. <laughs> right, right. But, but in a sort of, um, I guess, uh, you know, negative way. Nan right. no yoda. What do you want? Do you use uh, nan no yo in modern Japanese these days? Actually, yeah, you do. Uh huh. So, nan no yo. And, you know, yeah, what do you want or what do you need? And, you know, depending on the way you say it, it can be, you know, it can be nice. Like, it could be said in a nice way, it could be said in a mean way. So, you know, you could use it nowadays. Um, you know, nan no yo. <laughs> nan no yo. And then, um, so, what do you want? And then I said, so, omae is a very abrupt way to say you. Mm -hmm. Shisan is like your, I don't know, what, what is shisan? Like everything you own? Yeah, pretty much. Like your, nandaro. Your assets. Um, your assets, every, every, yeah, everything. assets. Yeah, your assets. Subete, everything. Ubai, steel, right? Uh-huh. Nikita, I have come here. So I have come here to take everything you own. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, 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 the idea of that was, you know, what, whatever the story was, through some foul play by the bad guy, I've managed to work it out that I can take all her things. Um, could, could you say that again, please? Nice. And then what did you say in reply to that? And I said... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, Oya 
is parents no of kataki. Kataki is basically in revenge. Right. So, oya no kataki o utsu. So, I've come to take revenge, basically. No ga saki da first. Saki is first. So, oya no kataki o utsu no ga saki da. But before that, I will take revenge. And then I said, shine means die. <laughs> <laughs> so the verb shinu means to die. Mm-hmm. And then shinda is someone died. Died. And shine is the imperative. You're telling someone to die. You're telling someone to die, yes. So I, I'm i feeling a little bit uncomfortable teaching this <laughs> as、uh, I'm in Japanese. Today we're going to learn. Today, you're going to learn how to tell someone to, to die. die. <laughs> so just well, be aware. No, we're just having fun. No, no, Please no, no. don't not, use this. We're not teaching people how to tell someone to die. We're just teaching the word. So when you watch movies and shows in Japanese, you can understand what they're saying. There you go. There you go. Actually, when、um, my Japanese friends ask me about、mm. Jap-、uh, English swear words, I'm, I'm really happy to teach them. And I always, always. Make the caveat. Hey, listen, I, I am happy to teach you all kinds of filthy English、um, because it's good to know just in case someone nearby uses it and you can understand what they're saying, right? So, yeah.、Mm. So, anyway, Amy gets the better of me. Her samurai sword skills are far superior than mine, and she runs her blade through the bad guy's stomach. And I go, Ugh, Uso Daro. Which literally means this is a lie or、mm-hmm. this can't be real. Yeah, right. Or no way, dude. <laughs> something, something like that.、Maybe. No way, bro. <laughs> no way, bro. I, <laughs> oh no, that's a bummer. <laughs> Basically, yes. There you go. So there's a, there's a little jidai geki or a、uh, mm-hmm. little period drama. By the way,、um, I heard. I heard that、uh, George Lucas、mm-hmm. was a massive Japan fan.、Mm-hmm. And the word for Jedi comes from Jidai Geki. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so Jidai means period, Geki、oh. drama, period drama. So、wow. Jidai, Jedi. Mind blown. Mind blown. Well, you know, this, this is old、uh, news to Star Wars and Japan、mm. nerds. But.、Uh, Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. And you also notice that in the first Star Wars movie, Luke Skywalker is basically wearing a judogi. Ah,、oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So there you go. Okay. So there you go. There, there was our little Jedi Geki. So let's talk about classic TV programs. So the, fir- the first bunch of、mm-hmm. programs we'll talk about are these kind of super classic TV programs that have been going for years and years and years. Everybody knows. And if they don't, they've been living in a cave. So the first one is Mito Komon. Did I pronounce that right? I think. Mito Komon. Mito Komon. And、um, Mito Komon is another Jidai Geki or Tai. Is it Taiga drama? No. It's not Taiga drama. It's not a Taiga drama, but yeah. But Jidai. Yeah, Jidai Geki drama. Yeah. Mito Komon is a Japanese Jidai Geki or period drama that was on primetime television from 1969 to. 2011, making it the longest running Jidai Geki in Japanese television history. The title character is the historic. Do you know, Ami Sensei? Eto. Oh man, I'm blanking out. Gambate, gambate. Eh? Eh? Tokugawa. Yes. Mitsukuni. Tokugawa Mitsukuni. Ah, Oshi. Close. There's too many Tokugawa. <laughs> There's too many Tokugawas, yeah. Close、ah. but no cigar. So there's this guy called Tokugawa Mitsukuni, the former vice shogun and retired second daimyo of the Mito domain. As、mm-hmm. if you, well, I'm, I'm sure Japanese historians know that. In the guise of Mitsuemon, a retired、mm-hmm. crepe merchant from Echigo,、oh. he roams the realm with two samurai retainers, fun loving Sasaki and studious Atsumi. An episode typically starts with some injustice. 
perpetrated by a corrupt official, wealthy merchant or gangster. The travelers arrive incognito, discover the injustice and quietly investigate it. And the episode concludes with a brawl in which the unarmed, disguised protagonists defeat a crowd of samurai and gangsters, culminating with the presentation of the inno that reveals the hero's identity. A bit like um, Knight Rider. Knight Rider? Right. You don't know Knight Rider? Mm, I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Afterwards, the hero passes judgment upon the villains and sets things straight with fair comments and encouragements and then continues with his journey. So it it's basically this super, super high status official pretends to be this what was it a, a crepe merchant <laughs> and then he at the end he does the reveal and what 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 do they say it's like uh konomon dokoro meni hairanka hikairo mm -hmm. hairanuka mm -hmm. hairanuka yeah yeah meni hairanuka so can you not see this personal seal this is the famous tokugawa mitsukuni bow before him and then everything's okay and that's it. Yeah. So Mito Komon was a massive, massive TV show. And it went on for wait, 1969 to 2011? Yeah. I think wow. it um I think it's it re it's re airing now or uh it was re up till recently um with a with a new guy, with a different guy. Yeah, no, I mm. I think you're right. I think they're doing it again, and I with Takeda Tetsuya san. Oh no way! Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Cool. But cool. Very cool. There you go. There. There you go. So there you go. That that that's Mito Koma. Now, um, maybe not massively popular with young people, but it, basically everybody knows it. It's it's a very kind of like I don't almost like a Robin Hood type story. You know, good against evil mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so next one. Ami, do you know Tamori Krabu? Yes, I do. So this is kind of weird because actually Tamori Krabu is this like late night TV program. Mm -hmm. And it's hosted by comedian Kazuyoshi Morita. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, most of the program I, I don't really like. It, it's mm -hmm. not that interesting. It's just this kind of late night old guys banter show. <laughs> mm -hmm. tamori song. Tamori-san is his, uh, I guess his, um, what do you call it? TV name? TV, yeah, his nickname. Everyone knows him as Tamori. And, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of weird. The actual program itself isn't good. But, and here's a big but, there's this one section in that TV program called... I think I know which one. Ready? Three, two, one. Sora, Sora Mimi, Mimi Awa. Awa. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have sung it too. Yeah. Dozo. I was like, okay, Sora Mimi Awa or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Sora Mimi Awa. So Awa means Awa. And then what does Sora Mimi mean? Like literally it means like sky ear. But what does that mean? It means something that you uh, misheard or something that, you know, you hear something, but it sounds like something else. <laughs> right and and that's exactly what that section is so can you you tell us what happens in this section of the program oh so um so viewers they send in their soramimis that they discover um and basically they're all songs um foreign songs yeah it's all foreign songs that listeners submit to the mm -hmm. show right and, you know, um, most of them probably don't um, understand the the words. It's usually in right. English. Sometimes it's in, like, Portuguese or Spanish or something. Right. But um, they're mostly, like, English songs. And then so they'll submit, like, a line from a song that they misheard. And and it sounds like it's Japanese. So it's, it's really funny. And then they, like, reenact that scene with, like, actors. <laughs> It's the it's the weirdest show. So basically, one of the most common genre they have is like heavy metal. Like there's a lot of Metallica. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, they also have all kinds of random things like old jazz records, and they sometimes have a lot of put. Yeah, like you were saying, Portuguese. They have a lot of bossa nova as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and then the hilarious thing is they'll they'll. So one of them was 
um, I forget the name of the song. It was a Metallica song. Mm -hmm. And it basically, obviously, they're the original English lyrics. But when you listen to it in Japanese, it sounds like um, sushi, fudo, nero. So have sushi, (laughs) have a bath and go to bed. Um, And they what they do is they get some actors and they act out the scene Mm -hmm. of the actions that they yeah with the with the music playing yeah it's funny yeah it's funny (laughs) there's a there's another one um i think it's smooth criminal by michael jackson yeah and when he goes pa like this Uh in japanese it sounds like pan which is uh, (laughs) bread bread yeah (laughs) and this is this is this old guy it's this old guy in an office eating bread. It's brilliant. I, I know this doesn't sound interesting at all through the medium of an audio podcast, but it's absolutely hilarious. It's pretty funny. I think you also need to understand a little bit of Japanese to get what's going on, but uh, you can you can see them on YouTube. They're, they're absolutely hilarious. But yeah, Soto Mimi Hour, that mm. is perhaps my number one favorite section of a TV show in Japanese or in Japan. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Ami Sensei, tell us about Smasma. Uh huh. So, Alexan, do you know Smapu Smapu? Yes, sir. Did you know that um, it's over? No. <laughs> no, you didn't. No one told me. Well, so Smapu Smapu was this really awesome. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, classic show that, uh, that aired on Monday nights and, um, SMAP was this, it's actually a boy band, a Japanese boy band. Right. And, um, they're a group of five and they had their own show every week and they did, you know, they did like anything from skits, um, to like Mm. games. Um, but they had this one particular section in the program that was like super popular and it was called bistro smap yeah 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 and they would um they would get in two teams and they would cook stuff for the guest um and the guests are usually like you know real famous people also and they would like request a dish or a theme and then the guys would you know cook stuff for them and they would basically compete and the guest decides whose uh, whose food was better. But it was a pretty good show. But the show ended because the group split. Mm. Pretty sad. Pretty sad. And that was huge news. Was that was last yeah. year? Two that years was, ago? I forget. When that was, was last there. year. That was last year. It was yeah. it was absolutely huge news. So um, smap smap often referred to simply as smas smap mm-hmm. is as you was as you were saying a Japanese variety show hosted by boy band smap or old man band now or well, well they've, <laughs> they've now since disbanded so check out some of these stats um it started april 15th 1996 every monday from 10 p.m to 10 54 p.m mm-hmm. and it ended on december 26 2016 that's 20 years yeah that's pretty long i looked into this right mm-hmm. and And I was thinking, well, they must have had a break, right? No. But pretty much, pretty much every year from 1996 all the way through to 2016, Mm -hmm. they pretty much had an episode every Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, Not not exactly 52 episodes. Like on an average, they'd have about like 45 to 49. But I mean, they never like, they never, you know, like took a long break or anything. Never took a break. So twenty, yeah. basically twenty years, and they had huge international superstars, mm-hmm. um, like uh, Lady Gaga, Beyonce. Yeah, they've had like um, Tarantino and like you know Cameron Diaz and Michael Jackson. Um, yeah, because they do like um, they do the bistro thing, but they also do like a singing right section at the end usually, and then like. Yeah, towards the end, they were always having like awesome people. They had like Earth, Wind, and Fire, or I think one time. And they must have had Stevie Wonder too. I I, I vaguely remember. Yeah, but yeah. I, think, I mean, I just think they just did. pretty much everybody. Just 
anyone who's anyone in the music world or whatever. It's just absolutely incredible. And um, the, the interesting thing about Smapu is that the kind of typical, uh, I don't want to call them talento because they're kind of more than talento. Like, so yeah. But basically, if, if you want to make it in the music world in Japan, you can't just have a band. Yeah. You... If you want to make it big, mm -hmm. you have to have a TV deal. So you have to be appearing in TV shows, maybe you're you acting in be, a TV yeah, drama. Acting in dramas and movies and all kinds of stuff. Yep. Maybe even doing comedy sometimes. And so the like a Japanese superstar or your typical Japanese superstar is kind of like the old school multi-talented stars we had back in the uk like you had a bit of sit you could do a bit of singing dancing acting comedy maybe you'd release an album but i think the key thing is tv obviously there are many really really cool bands out there but the really big bands all have tv deals so it's, mm -hmm. it's a very tv centric kind of media landscape out there in in japan but yes yeah, smap smap uh, well the band smap was a massive cultural icon mm -hmm. When they split up last year, it was, uh, I think, there was just a feeling of shock in mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. But uh, Bist uh, Bistro Smap was amazing. It was it was actually pretty entertaining, and mm -hmm. apparently they they actually got quite good at cooking. So uh, <laughs> I, I would ho I would hope after uh, twenty yeah, years, twenty years, we do. Okay, so that's kind of variety shows. Now, one of my favorite shows is. I'm I'm gonna murder this downtown no gaki tsukaya are hen there. Um, <laughs> so how, how do you close. say it? So close. How do you? So but close. no cigar. How do you? How do you say it? Downtown no gaki no tsukaya are hen de. So I don't know what that means. It's something like in the downtown area. This is no place for kids, or don't don't give this job to the kids, or something like that. Or yeah, like gaki no tsukai. Yeah, like uh, it's not, we're not kids, basically. We're not kids. But yeah, yeah, yeah but people like, just, uh, you know, it's so long, so people just shorten it and just say gakitsuka. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Gakitsuka. Or sometimes just downtown, right? Um, well, downtown is the um, is the comedians that are in it. Right. Mm. And the, that's nani, um, it's uh, Matsumoto and Hamada. Or Matsumoto is also known as Machang. Mm -hmm, he's Ma this kind of uh, and Hamachang. He's uh, this loud mouth, uh, typical Kansai guy. Actually, he uh, Machang also has his uh, Matsumoto Suberanai Hanashi, which is also a really good TV yeah, show. So yeah. that that's basically where Matsumoto hangs out with his friends, and they take turns telling funny stories. So Suberanai Hanashi means like a. Basically, it means a funny story, but mm -hmm. it's a story that was it doesn't make you. Basically, it's basically it's like a firm story that will never, like like everyone will laugh. At. Yeah, right. right yeah, because right. in Japanese, yeah, in Japanese, when you the the word or the verb suberu means to slip, and it actually. Um, you know, in this context, in a in a comedy um, context, it means that you basically, you know, you screwed up and uh, and um, you know you didn't say something that was funny. Right, so, right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. So yeah, it's that that's really funny. But um, going back to the um, gaki gakitsuka, no gakitsuka, one of the funniest sections in it is the batsu game it, or the you cannot laugh game so basically what they'll do is they'll send them to uh i don't know like a campground or they'll sleep like in a, a school like a school gymnasium for the night or they stay in a Jap traditional japanese style ryokan mm -hmm. and incidents happen these these actors come in and basically do really stupid things to try and make them laugh and if they laugh <laughs> they have batsu or they have to kind of pay yes. a penalty and that's usually getting hit really really hard in the rear end with some kind of plastic sword or something yes. <laughs> so it, it's pretty funny again it's you can funny. see this stuff on youtube but matsumoto and uh well downtown that that group kind of really 
started to become famous in the late 80s, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. they had they were doing stand up for years and years, and now they're kind of really the kings of comedy in Japan. They are, especially in Kansai. Especially in Kansai, and yeah. Kansai, um, Kansai again is known for manzai, which is usually comedy duo stand up comedy. It's uh, and you have the tsukomi and the boke, and the tsukomi is kind of like the straight guy, and the boke is the dumb guy or the funny guy. Mm-hmm. And they what one typical Osaka dialect, uh, one typical thing they usually say is uh, "nande yane." Mm-hmm. So the straight guy goes "nande yane," like "what the hell are you saying?" And then he like hits the other guy around the back of the head. So it's <laughs> standard Osaka comedy fair. So yeah, a uh, Kansai produces a lot of comedians. Mm-hmm. Is ninety nine from Kansai? Yes, they are. They're from Osaka. Let's go through a couple more. Uh, one last classic TV program that everybody in Japan knows, and that is Ami Sensei. Kohaku Tagasen, or Kohaku for short. So that literally means the red and white show or the red and white singing contest. So what, what's that about? Yes. So basically, the female singers are the red team. And then the male singers are the white team. And every year there's, uh, you know, the classic older singers that appear in each team. And then there's also singers that, you know, made it big that year. And then on the 31st, on New Year's Eve, is when this show airs live from NHK Hall. And it's aired by... NHK and they take turns singing and at the end everyone at the hall they raise a white or red fan to basically vote for their favorite team whoever they whichever team they liked who 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 votes for that is like is it just like the just viewers of the show before it used to just be the audience yeah but also nowadays with modern tech modern technology yeah. people vote via your TV remote and so yeah it's like all these votes whichever team gets the most votes wins and it's pretty cool you get to see your favorite singers people collaborating with each other so it's pretty cool so um Namie Amuro yes. uh, appeared in the most recent one and they were the, basically they were saying um, I, I was just kind of reading this article and it was saying that um, it was kind of flagging a bit and so they're saying Namie Amuro saves Kohaku uh, and this yeah. was like a um, like a kind of a comeback appearance because she hadn't been uh, appearing for years and years and years and she came back and everyone said it was amazing and she saved the show well yeah and it's she, yeah she saved the show and it's actually going to be her last appearance too because she's actually going to be um she's not going to be basically doing her thing music thing anymore after september of this year so yeah so everybody's like oh my gosh like we got to see this and i was watching kohaku this past New Year's Eve. Right. Because I was in Japan. So I got to see it live. So yeah. Was it good? It was good. And it, it lived up to the hype, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Especially Namie Amuro's part. Yeah. So yeah, everyone said it was just absolutely amazing. But yeah, again, Kohaku, absolutely massive TV program. So basically all, all the TV programs up until now that we've been talking about are these huge classic programs everyone knows um well some of them aren't showing anymore but um they're definitely worth knowing you know these kind of cultural institutions but i mean sensei how about you what what tv programs do you like i actually have one classic one to add to that list oh yeah so um it's a really really massive you know show in kansai right so if you're from kansai if you meet someone in kansai they will definitely know the show. It's called Night Scoop. And it's a play on words because it's aired at like almost midnight. And so 
It's spelled yeah. like night, like yeah. night armor night. So night scoop. And basically every week they get three requests from different viewers. You can send in your requests and they do three requests and they can be like the most random requests. And you basically ask them to investigate anything you want. Oh, interesting. Cool. And it's really good. It's so funny. You have to watch it. Just go on YouTube. But uh, it can be anything from like, um, I've I've never met my dad. <sighs> you know, I want to meet him. Or it could be, but that's like an extreme example. Right. But I've lost my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my wallet between the wall and the whatever partition in the house and I need someone to get it. <laughs> or right, my right. my dog is crazy and will bark at anything. <laughs> Please make it stop. <laughs> or, you know, it's just so funny and right. Or I can do this amazing trick with my feet, right, my right, toes. Right. Please come and see. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just so funny, so you have to watch it. Um and the people that go investigate are comedians, so you know, they make it funny. Uh interesting, interesting. And, yeah, so it's that's one of my I would say uh all-time favorites. I'll have to check that out. It sounds like a really good format. You need to. Yeah, it's great. And you'll just find, you know, each request just uploaded to YouTube or whatever. So it's pretty cool. It's funny because I imagine some of them are pretty easy and then other ones. Yeah, some of them are easy. So when they have easy ones, they put them all together. Right. And they do like 10 in one um, section, right? Yeah, where they normally would do one section, they just put like a bunch in one. So, but I think my, one of my favorites was like, so you know the, the brand Ferragamo? Yeah. They're like, I want to eat a Ferragamo shoe. <laughs> and they bring the shoe, Ferragamo shoe, to, to one of the top chefs in, in Osaka. <laughs> and they have them cook it. <laughs> and it's pretty funny. It's pretty random. That's brilliant. And funny. But if you're silly like me and yes. Alex, then yes. you will definitely enjoy this show. So I do have a couple shows that I like. Mm. I mean, I have a ton of shows yeah. I like. I failed to mention that right. I love Japanese TV and right. you know, I watch pretty much everything. But I have a couple that I watch pretty much every week and their newer shows like uh kanjani kanjani chronicle kanja kanjani chronicle kanjani yeah chronicle mm. so kanjani is this boy band right and they're all so they're like smap they belong to the same agency right 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 ja janis right yes janis and this group is called kanjani right 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 and they do different things every week, kind of like smop, smop. But there's this one section that I really like yeah. that they do every so often. And it's a kaiwa dengon game. Oh, interesting. It's really funny. So so there's usually three guys, three of the guys from Kanjani. And they basically have to style. And they have to... What's Dengon Game? Yeah, Dengon, ga Dengon Game mm. is like um, English. Uh, you basically whisper. You, so you have like a, an original message. A phrase. You whisper it into the person next to you, and then they whisper it into the yeah. other person. And the funny thing is, like the first message gets passed on. It's like a telephone, it's like a telephone game. game, yeah. And so at the yeah. last person, it sounds completely different. Right. Um, yeah. And it's funny. It's so funny because the first person. There's three guys from Kanjani, and right. then there's three people, like three native English speakers. Right. So they put a Kanjani between each native speaker. Ah, okay. So it starts with a native <laughs> speaker, and it's like, you know, like a phrase, right. usually a pretty simple phrase, but a useful phrase, like that you would use, you know, if you're traveling abroad. Right, 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 right. And one of my favorites was, uh, it was actually like a Soramimi because 
you know, the they said it, and then the the native speaker said it, and then the Kanjani guy was like, "That was Japanese, wasn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> and so the phrase was, "Is it possible to return this?" Right. Okay. Right. Like if you're at a store, right, 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 like a clothing store. So, is it possible to return this? And then the and the very first Kanjani guy heard it and was like. He was like, did you just say, passport to <laughs> Can I get a passport? Can I get my passport? So, passport to Is it possible to return this? Passport to It's pretty funny, right? So, that is a great example of soramimi. But, yeah, that's one of my favorites right now. And then Ametoku is another one ametoku. that I watch mm. every week. Yeah. Have you heard of Ametoku? So so it's called Ametoku because the hosts or hosts are this comedian group called Ameagari Keshitai and Toku because it's a talk show. Yeah. And every week there's a bunch of comedians usually and they have something in common. And whatever they have in common, you know, it could be like they they like the same food, right, they like right. the same musician, or they like, you know, the same manga or something. Right, right, right. But I think people would enjoy it because they do a lot of episodes of manga. And it's funny because they talk about, you know, sometimes it's like super, super random and right. uh, super silly. Right. So it's cool. It's really funny. And uh, yeah, if you, I think if you enjoy Japanese culture and fun things. Amy, your middle name is fun. <laughs> yes, it is. Your middle name is fun. So, you know, something just occurred to me um, through all these TV shows, you know, um, we sometimes students, we students of Japanese tend to get a little too serious about the grammar and learning particles and vocabulary and kanji cards. And then sometimes we might forget to actually check out TV programs and find out mm -hmm. about the culture. And the great thing about sites like YouTube, even though Japanese TV is is not very accessible abroad, but you can't, a lot of these shows are on YouTube or at least clips of them. And so I think even, even if you're a complete beginner at Japanese and your listening ability isn't good enough, you should still mm -hmm. get as much input as you can because yeah. remember, it's not just also, it's not just the language you're learning, but also all this kind of cultural information. And if you're watching the same TV program as a Japanese person, you'll have something to talk about. Surprise, surprise. So true, true, true. Your three favorite TV programs are Naito Scoop, uh, mm -hmm. Kanjani Kronikaru, Kanjani Kronikaru, mm -hmm. Ametoku. Yep. And that's, yeah, that's great. Thanks so much for that, Ami Sensei. That's really interesting. So, yeah, yeah. again, everyone, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. This wasn't a very thorough show on all absolutely all Japanese TV programs but this is it's just a small random sampling of stuff that we like yeah. and again I, th I think it really is important for you to maybe mm -hmm. go online and check out Japanese TV shows that you might personally be interested in um, what it, whatever kind of things you're into you should definitely check it out online and again you know watching Japanese TV shows really gives you a, really gives you a clear idea of what's happening in Japan now and also, you can understand the culture on a deeper level. And I think that actually does help your language. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Ami Sensei, it's more much like to share it today. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's If you have a question, comment, or whatever, please send us an email at info at learnjapanesepod.com. Check out our free online courses at dojo.learnjapanesepod.com. You can find us on facebook just do a search for learn japanese pod you can find us on twitter at japanese podcast because twitter wouldn't give me enough characters to write learn japanese pod and what else um check out our forum at learn slash forum 
Thank you. Thank you. Again for listening. We shall see you next time. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Ami, that was mecha tonoshikatta. Thank you. I did too. Mecha omorokatta na. Mecha omorokatta na. Ja, matta ne. See you next time. Matta ne.